Hello friends, recently I had asked one MCQ on my social media platforms. Let's try to find out the answer. Membrane proteins are degraded in which of the following cell organelles? Lysosomes, peroxisomes, proteosomes or Golgi bodies? I am sure most of you uh, first thought of lysosomes as the answer. Well, uh, proteins are degraded in lysosomes, but they are cellular proteins. Uh, the question was on membrane proteins. So, uh, some of you might have even answered peroxisomes. The answer is proteosomes. So, membrane proteins are degraded in proteosomes. And let's see what is the application of this knowledge uh, in the clinical physiology and clinical medicine. So, uh, let's have a look at the membrane proteins. I repeat once again, we are talking about the membrane proteins particularly. There is a turnover of these membrane proteins. They are synthesized within the cell. Then they are taken to the membrane where they will perform their function. Now, membrane proteins could be uh, carrier proteins, channel proteins, lots of uh, varieties in that. We are looking at a channel protein. So, it was synthesized inside the cell, then it was taken to the membrane and then it will be removed from the membrane and will be degraded. So, this is the turnover of the membrane protein. It was formed, it was taken to the membrane, inserted in the membrane. Then as its function has been done or its lifespan has been done, uh, it will be removed and will be degraded. Now, uh, it is degraded, the membrane proteins are destroyed or degraded in a cell organelle called as 26S proteosomes, 26S proteosomes. So, answer to the MCQ was 26S proteosomes or simply proteosomes. Let us try to further stretch this discussion and try to understand further details. This membrane protein, which is a channel uh, shown here, it will be removed from the membrane as its lifespan is over and then it will be taken to the 26S proteosomes where it will be degraded. But for its removal from the membrane, it, is, it has to be first tagged. And there is a system of enzymes specifically meant for this, tagging. So, membrane protein will be first tagged for removal and then it will be removed and will be degraded. So, the system of enzymes which is meant for this tagging, it is called as ubiquitin system of enzymes. So, ubiquitins are the substances which tag the membrane protein for its removal from the membrane and then uh, its fate uh, eventually. So, ubiquitins, they tag the membrane protein and then membrane proteins are removed and uh, that will be all for the membrane proteins. Means, uh, uh, they will be destroyed or degraded in the 26S proteosomes. Now, let us take an example to understand this in further detail, the application of this knowledge uh, in the clinical side. We have aldosterone and we are already aware that uh, under the influence of aldosterone, there is increased sodium reabsorption from the renal tubules and even elsewhere in the body. So, here is a portion of the renal tubule and sodium will be reabsorbed into the blood under the influence of aldosterone. If you have watched some of my previous videos, uh, sodium, glucose, they have to cross two membranes to enter the blood vessel. This is the lumen of the renal tubule. Here is the sodium which was filtered. For its reabsorption, it will have to cross two membranes, the apical membrane which is facing the lumen, sodium will enter the cell and then the basolateral membrane will be crossed to enter the blood. 
on the basolateral side uh, we have sodium potassium pump for this purpose so here is a sodium potassium pump it removes the sodium from inside the cell and sends it into the blood because of this the sodium concentration within the cell this is the lining cell that uh, that is lining the tubule uh, sodium concentration within the cell will decrease and then sodium will diffuse from the lumen into the cell because high to low concentration diffusion and therefore it will diffuse from the lumen into the cell via a channel called as ENAC epithelial sodium channel we are specifically talking about the aldosterone action therefore uh, I am mentioning ENAC elsewhere it could be a carrier protein like NKCC sodium potassium chloride co-transporter or NCC sodium chloride co-transporter but here specifically there is a channel called as ENAC epithelial sodium channel so sodium diffuses from the lumen into the cell through this ENAC and then it is pumped out of the cell and is taken into the blood sent into the blood by the sodium potassium pump you know sodium potassium pump uh, pumps the sodium out of the cell so these two transporters are there now ENAC is a membrane protein and we are talking about the membrane proteins so ENAC whenever its lifespan has finished ENAC is removed uh, by this membrane by tagging and you we have said just now ubiquitins are the enzymes which tag any membrane protein for its removal here there is a ubiquitin system called as NED NED4 like this is the ubiquitin system that is going to tag the ENAC for its removal from the membrane okay and then it will be removed and degraded but what is the function of aldosterone aldosterone is supposed to increase the sodium reabsorption what aldosterone does is it deubiquinates this particular ENAC this particular channel called ENAC aldosterone will cause deubiquination means the ubiquitins which were supposed to tag the ENAC and remove the ENAC from the membrane that will not happen now which means what ENAC will stay for longer in the membrane this channel will not be degraded early it will not be removed from the membrane it will not uh, be uh, destroyed early but it will stay on for longer what will be the effect sodium reabsorption will increase because aldosterone also acts on the other side of the cell basolateral membrane has sodium potassium pump so aldosterone increases the number of sodium potassium pump right sodium reabsorption needed two transporters on the apical side we have a channel called as ENAC on the basolateral side we have sodium potassium pump aldosterone is acting on both sides on the ENAC it increases its survival so ENAC will stay for longer in the membrane and on the for the sodium potassium pump the number is increased by the aldosterone I am talking about the aldosterone action so all these transport proteins will have increased number in the membrane and therefore sodium reabsorption will increase under the influence of aldosterone so that was the application of this particular knowledge that we had that the membrane proteins are first tagged by the ubiquitin system and then they are removed from the membrane their job is over their function is done but aldosterone is not allowing that to happen particularly in the case of this membrane protein ENAC and the result is increased sodium reabsorption.